What's up, everyone, and welcome back to the Stocks with Mike and Tom show. We have some big things to talk about today with Elon Musk and the Twitter deal. We have Michael Burry from The Big Short shorting Apple stock. We also have some uh, news with Jeff Bezos and a lot of other things. So stick around today, guys. We have a lot of important things to talk about. And let us know what stocks you are watching in the comments down below. A lot of times, the stocks you guys comment, we end up covering. But Tom, let's get right into it. Yeah, my Twitter stock was down 8% today on a pretty bad no on a pretty bad note here and I should say a lot of other stocks were doing pretty good this morning and Twitter was really like underperforming. So they were falling down in a big way and Elon Musk has been getting in a spat with the with the Twitter CEO right here today. He's been also saying that a lower price deal is not out of the question. Bloomberg reported today and that is huge because as we heard Hindenburg came out with a nice report over the past week or so, well, actually on May 9th here, and they said that Musk holds all the cards and they saw a big, uh, a big chance that the Twitter deal could get repriced lower. And ever since that Hindenburg report, Twitter stock has been all over the place. You can see how they really tanked down there um, a couple days after that report. And then overall, Mike, as we know, there's just been a lot of bad news lately revolving around Twitter. Musk has been saying that there's been a lot of uh, spam accounts on there and that, that the deal is on hold until they figure out how many accounts are spam accounts. And he says he's estimating that there's up to at least 20% of all users are spam accounts. So that sounds pretty bad, Mike. And I don't know what's going to end up happening with this deal, but who knows? It might get repriced lower now. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, talk about a crazy year so far, Tom. Stocks are sinking. The Twitter Elon Musk deal might not go through, and Elon's definitely beefing pretty hard uh, about these uh, spam accounts. Yeah, he definitely is. Like, look at what he said here. So the Twitter CEO said, unfortunately, we don't believe that this specific estimation can be performed externally, given the critical need to use both public and private information, which we can't share. And they just go on with some more stuff there. And Elon Musk puts actually the poop emoji here, believe it or not. So it's kind of funny. You know, this is reported straight from Wall Street Journal. They uh, they set it up there in the title themselves. So it's uh, it's pretty crazy, Mike. I can't believe everything that's going on right now with Twitter um, and their stock is all over the place. You know, it's honestly falling down quite a bit. I would have never expected it to be at $37 ever since, uh, you know, Elon said he'd buy it at $54.20. I mean, even if it gets repriced, repriced lower, I don't think it'd be down to 37, but man, it's just, it's causing a lot of volatility here. Yeah. So here's the thing, Tom, just like you said, like if the deal goes through in its current state, that is one giant spread. Like you can buy right now, Twitter shares for $37 and like 40 cents. And if the deal goes through, you'll get bought out for $54 and 20 cents, which is around a 45% premium, which is pretty dang good but here's the thing if you buy now and the deal does get repriced or if it doesn't go through at all twitter stock might fall down to like 25 or 20 or maybe even lower yeah it really could and looking at the chart here i mean it's been falling off the table in a big way and what i think is really important to look at here mike is look at that implied volatility it went from lows down here of like 31 percent or like 32 percent now we're all the way back up to 84 percent because I think people are starting to think that the deal won't happen. Whenever they thought the deal was going to happen, the IV started falling down a lot because they just thought Twitter stock would be stagnant and not really move too much. But now that's not the case. That IV is really showing itself here and coming right back up. And Mike, I know it wasn't just Twitter and Elon Musk having spats today. I know Amazon was having some pretty bad spats with the White House, actually. Uh, Jeff Bezos was talking a lot about them with inflation and stuff like that. And it was getting kind of brutal. You know, you can see there's a pretty nice article here um, on CNBC and it, he pretty much, uh, Jeff Bezos said a whole bunch of stuff. He criticized Biden for passing the $1.9 trillion American rescue plan. And also he's pretty much saying that Biden is just trying to blame corporations and stuff like that for the inflation. But the main thing is that a lot of these, a lot of stuff that the government's been doing is honestly the main cause for the inflation. So it's pretty funny to see Jeff Bezos doing this, Mike. He's he's hitting pretty hard actually at uh at the White House here. And I mean, man, he's been going off on Twitter all day. Yeah, no doubt about that. 
Um, what I also want to talk about, Tom, is this short on Apple from Michael Burry. So for those of you who don't know, Michael Burry is the guy behind the movie The Big Short. He uh, made a ton of money by calling the housing crash in like 2008 and 2009. We can see that now he is short Apple through the form of put options, and he is long Google, Facebook, and Discovery. So I thought this was interesting, and I wanted to cover it. And one thing to keep in mind, guys, it's like, it's not like he's fully shorting the market again. Like, yes, he's shorting Apple, which is a giant player in the market, but he's also long, you know, companies like Facebook and Google and a couple other ones. Yeah, he is. And you can see it's reported right here in the article by Business Insider. They say the fund's largest long positions as of as of March 31st were a $22 million stake in Bristol Myers Squibb roughly $19 million in booking holdings and discovery and an $18 million stake in Alphabet or Google. So he's definitely still long some stocks, which is cool to see, but Hey, I guess he's just trying to maybe hedge himself here in the shorter term or something like that. He's definitely been known to do that before. I know he was uh, shorting Tesla a few months ago, Mike, and he ended up doing pretty well, I think on that. So we'll have to see what happens with, uh, with this as of now, but you know, looking at Apple stock today, it didn't do too bad. It ended up down 1%. It was up though at one point in the day, but it ended up not really doing too much. I'm curious to see if Apple will keep falling here, Mike, because honestly, Apple stock is at a huge support right around 140. And if we keep breaking this to the downside, I think we could see a bigger move. Yeah, like you said, he was short Tesla a couple months ago, but I forgot how that one ended up playing out because I know he had, he had weird hedges by, like, I think it was longing Facebook and Google and maybe Microsoft or some other company. But um, yeah, I mean, he's he's done a couple trades like this in the past. And of course, he's most famous for his uh, great prediction in 2008 and 2009, but we'll see. Yeah, and if you guys haven't seen that movie yet, The Big Short, I really hope you guys will check that out. It's a pretty good movie, and it's awesome, Mike. Who's all in that? Steve Carell, I think? Yeah, for sure. It's one of my favorite movies. Yeah, it's great. I mean, it shows every a lot of stuff that happened in 2008, and it also shows the hardships Burry had to go through because, as we know, the market didn't crash right away, Mike. He had to hold for quite a while, and a lot of those investors were getting pretty angry with him. Yeah, no doubt. So Tom, uh, the market's crazy right now. What's on the schedule for this week in terms of events and earnings? Yeah, so as far as events go, we have Powell speaking tomorrow, which is going to be a pretty big deal. We can see he's going to be speaking right here at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And then also we're going to have the retail sales come out tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. So keep in mind the retail sales, they might make the market move, they might not. Well, it depends really on how bad they uh, miss or not, I think. Um, hopefully the numbers come in good, though. The main thing is going to be Powell speaking tomorrow at 2 p.m. It's not going to be the craziest speech ever. It's just a discussion at the Wall Street Journal Future of Everything Festival. So it's nothing like the FOMC meeting or anything like that, but it's definitely still a big event. And who knows, you know, if he ends up having some hawkish statements or something like that, it could really uh, cause some volatility here in the market and the spy did pretty well today you know it held up decently well it did close down red but it was up for uh for a lot of the day mike it did pretty decent but in the end it ended up pulling back and you know it's not a uh, it's not too uh it's not setting up too bearish yet for tomorrow but hopefully powell doesn't change it yeah and then tom what's on this earnings schedule yeah the earnings are going to be pretty big for tomorrow too actually so before open we're going to have walmart to look at and home depot that's going to be big uh c's also big along with jd but my the main ones i'm looking at tomorrow morning are walmart and home depot i think those are going to be two pretty big value stocks to keep your eyes on there and then wednesday we have target and lowe's before open and then after close we have cisco so definitely still some big ones here Nothing like the past couple of weeks as far as earnings go, but you know, I'll definitely take it with Walmart and Home Depot. Yeah, it's a big week for like retail. Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's, Target, um, Kohl's. Um, big week for retail, I guess we'll say. Even, uh, where's the other one I just saw? Uh, Bath and Body Works. Yeah, so they report as well. Um, either way, nothing too crazy in terms of earnings, but keep it on your radar. Uh, but Tom, let's get right into the momentum plays for tomorrow. And with the first one, we have NEO to the upside. Yeah, good old NEO here. These China stocks did pretty well today. Go ahead and make NEO break above $15 even. 
Alrighty, and with the next one, we have Baidu also to the upside. Yeah, another China stock. Go ahead and make them break above 120. Alrighty, and with the last one, we have Redfin, but to the downside. Man, poor Redfin. Yeah, they actually are pulling back pretty hard here. Go ahead and make them break below $10.30. All right, so we are watching Redfin for a potential day trade to the downside tomorrow, only if it breaks below the levels Tom listed. And then we are watching Baidu and Neo for potential day trades to the upside tomorrow, only if they break above the levels Tom listed. And then before we move on, I just want to give a giant shout out to our member of the day, Skylark. Huge shout out, Skylark. Thanks so much for your uh, recent activity in the Stocked Up Discord chat. Tom and I really appreciate you. But Tom, do you have any favorite setups heading into tomorrow? Yeah, I'm keeping my eyes on a lot of stocks here. So there were some stocks that were really flying to the downside today, like Beyond Meat. I'm going to really keep my eyes on them. I think they had a lot of volatility today. I think they're a pretty uh, interesting stock. They've been all over the place since earnings happened. And I know they had a weird rumor with McDonald's a couple of weeks ago that caused some volatility. So I'm definitely keeping my eyes on them. But um, some other stocks and keep my eyes on, Mike, are the oil plays still, of course. Look at Oxy today. They were up 5.6%. Look at this daily chart. I mean, they are breaking back out to the upside in a major way, making new yearly highs here. So it's been great uh, for these oil plays the past couple of days. I will say crude oil itself also is flying back up. We're back up to $114 a barrel. That's uh, that's getting pretty high there again, Mike. And, you know, we haven't been this high on oil since March 24th there. And if we break that, we'll be heading back up to levels like at March 8th and March 4th, where we were at like 130 a barrel. So that's just insane to see with oil, Mike. And, you know, I know Warren Buffett bought some Oxy a while ago and everybody was kind of scratching their heads. Like, why is Warren Buffett buying Oxy up here at the top? But he must have done his homework, Mike. As we know, he uh, he definitely does. And look at the way Oxy's been moving. He's definitely, uh, it. he's doing very well on this. I don't know how much he bought, Mike, but I'm sure the profits are looking pretty good right now. Oh, yeah. There we go. Well, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe. We post brand new videos every single day. And if you trade options, definitely check out that link in the description and the comments down below for daily options, swing trades, day trades, and a lot more. Check it out. It's awesome. And let's have an amazing rest of the week.